Hey everybody, it's Strict9 with Strict9 GP, and welcome back to my latest episode of my uh, Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2020 playthrough. It's all come down to this. We're at the last game of the season for the Austin P. Governors. Had a good run. Uh, just could not overtake Belmont, but we're still going to play them today. Last game of the season at home. Should be hopefully a good matchup. Uh, I'll give you an update on how we've done since then. We're still in a great spot. Uh, 21 and 7 record overall, 13 and 4 in the conference. Our goals going into the season from the board were to finish top three in the conference. We're going to make that. Finish above 500, easily going to make that. So um, a great year overall. I can't really complain. I, I wish I had uh, had a little bit better uh, run to. It would have been nice to have gone into that last game able to tie or, or overtake Belmont for the, the uh, conference championship or conference uh, regular season championship. But I'm, I'm happy with what, the way we did. Uh, we are coming off, though, uh, last episode, we, we beat Southeast Missouri State, a good win. Uh, they were probably the closest competitor we had for that third spot, second spot, I guess I should say, in the conference. Then we had a, a tough loss on the road to Tennessee State, Got it back together for the next three games, and then a big loss against Moorhead State on the road, which I thought they were going to be pretty competitive, too. They're kind of mid middle of the pack, I guess, in the conference. But it was a big loss, you know, one of our poorest performances of the year. So hopefully we can bounce back against Belmont. Just to take a look at the standings for us, uh, we're comfortably in second place. Even if we lose, Tennessee State can't overcome or overtake us, so... Uh, we'll have to see how that looks in terms of the conference tournament, but we'll we'll just ride it out and see how that looks. But I want to get through this game first. Uh, you can see Belmont. I'm I'm kind of surprised they took those two losses. Honestly, they were definitely upsets. Um, the only good thing is they're nine and six away, so maybe they don't play as well on the road. That might that might help us out. Um, but let's just go ahead and get it started. And then we'll look at how uh, the rest of the basketball world finished up the season, or the regular season. And I'm going to, if you watch my last, uh, the last episode where I played Belmont, I think it was two, two or three episodes back, I'm going to go with something that uh, may be a little unorthodox, but it kind of kept me in the game at that time. It, it's basically going favoring outside on the offense because Belmont, they match up against us. I think there's only one or two areas where it's kind of a toss-up, but they, they, they're they they going to match up against us really well. Um, so I'm going to favor outside. And then on defense, I'm going to go with a 1-2-2 two, two zone and just see if that can uh, calm down their outside shooting for a bit. And I'm going to slow the pace off, tip off. I'm, I'm going to start right away with a kind of a slower pace. Maybe that'll eliminate some turnovers early and uh, oh, right off the bat we we get a, a three-pointer so that's a good start and a foul on the other end uh, after a missed shot. And I definitely want to crash the boards a little bit more on offense. We're up 5 Uh They're having a hard time getting a shot to fall uh, but there's one three-pointer and we throw it away they're not going to be easy I don't think no matter what we play them oh good good job there Anderson misses the shot but gets the foul makes the first free throw makes them both so we're up seven to three oh, and they come back with a three and they have overtaken us that quick eight to seven uh, Ben Martin though our best player he uh, misses the shot draws a foul and hits them both so we're back up nine to eight they have hit three free three three pointers in this game. They're three for three. Maybe the zone is not not working out too good right now. And uh, tie game, but they draw a foul on us, shooting foul, make both of the free throws. Out of bounds, Belmont ball. So they're up by two. That's their biggest lead. But we come back and tie it and draw the fall, foul and make the free throw. Uh, five for five and free throws. We're, we're having a hard time this year converting on that. 
Looks like they turned it over. Good, good shot there. Another three-pointer. They're four for four three-pointers. And it's back and forth right now. 18-18 game. Another foul. They're up to five team fouls. Anderson makes the first one. Makes the second one. Seven for seven on the free throw line. A turnover there, and we're up 22-18. Seems like we're doing pretty good against them inside. Another foul. Rushing draws a foul, but rushing is a pretty poor free throw shooter. And he misses the first one. Makes the second one. Five-point game. It's their biggest lead of the game. And a foul on the shot, so they'll go to the line. He makes makes them both. Belmont, very few weaknesses on this team. And a turnover for us. We got our bench on out there right now. That's going to be tough. Samuel called for his second foul already, and he's a bench player. So it's 6-3 to three in team fouls. Oh, good play there. He misses a shot, Hall in the center, but he uh, – Gets the rebound, goes to the line on a foul, makes them both. We are 10 for 11 free throw shooting. Miss there, we get the rebound. Another Good play there. We're up by seven, our biggest lead, but another three-pointer. They're five for six. I don't think I can stop them. I feel like, you know, we're doing pretty good with this zone defense. I think I'm going to stay with it for right now. Oh, and Marshak called for a foul, our fourth team foul, with uh, just under 10 minutes left. We're up by eight, biggest lead. Another three-pointer, six for seven. And we answer with a three-pointer on the other end. Six-point game. We can't let them get a run here. If, we, if they get a run and they're already uh, within four turnovers, they could, they could come within uh, two, and they do. You can't let them in the game. That's the problem. Jepson makes the shot, draws the foul, and converts the three-point play, so we're back up by five. And their shooting's getting really hot. Both both teams shooting 12 for 21 until that last possession. And we're up by five, up by seven again. And a foul there. Uh, it is a shooting foul, so he's going to the line. He misses it first miss at the free throw line for them makes the second one six point game and marty anderson turns it over a travel oh my gosh a turnover there it looks like or maybe a block we we convert up by eight again they miss we get the rebound we could go up by oh we can't go up by 10 ah and they hit another three seven for eight on three pointers Edwards misses the shot, draws the foul. Um, so he goes to the line. We're 11 for 12, free throw shooting. He makes the first one, makes the second one. We're up by seven now. 345 or so to play in the first half. Foul, Dearborn, who is uh, their best player. I think he's their best player. That doesn't seem right because he is. He has no, no points in this game. Uh until those first two right there at the free throw line. Oh, big three-pointer there. We're up by eight. They come back quick on a... Oh, having a hard time hitting those three-pointers. We're just three for seven. And Ben Martin called for the foul. That's their seventh team foul, but they missed the uh, one-on-one. -on -one. But unfortunately, Cunningham throws it away on the other end. And another foul. So they're uh, back within five. And uh, Edwards on the other th end misses the shot, draws the foul. And he misses uh, second free throw, but they throw it away. Six-point lead, uh, eight-point lead. Good play there. Six-point lead. Their shooting is incredible. Um, we're shooting better than we usually do. They're probably shooting about where they usually do. They're 17 for 30. We're back to the line again. 15, 16 for 18 at the line this half. That's incredible. And they miss. We get the rebound, but it doesn't matter. And they missed the three-pointer at the half. So we're going to go into the half. High-scoring game here. 55-49 lead. Um, 
a lot of good things about that first half for us. Um, ben Martin, as usual, he's uh, leading away the way with scoring 12 points already in the first half. Grower, not too bad from him. Four assists, five points. Jepson, a good game, nine points. He has uh, looked a little bit better down the stretch here, down these last few games. So in the paint, we're outscoring him there, 14 to 12. Second half points, second chance points, sorry. Eight to four, uh, six to four in fast break points. Uh, we got to keep them from getting three pointers somehow. Uh, just got to hope that they get cold. Air shooting has been really high. 18 for 31, 16 for 18 with free throw line. Uh, we're not going to be able to to sustain that in the second half. I don't think. Um, I would be very surprised if we do. But that's going to be, I think, how we're going to win it if we win it. They get cold before we do. Uh, and let's just get back to the action. They're going to have the ball first. And out of bounds, Austin B. Ball. Be nice if we could score first, and we do. Up by eight. They missed a three pointer. I'd like to see them get cold in those three pointers. We're up by 11 now. Three pointer from us, biggest lead of the game. And a big basket there. Ben Martin makes the shot, draws the foul. Misses the free throw, but we're up by 13. And they still haven't made a basket, I don't think, this half. And Ben Martin, again, makes the shot, draws the foul, makes the free throw. He's up to 17 points now for the game. 16-point lead for us. <clears throat> and they miss the shot, but get the rebound. And miss again, goes out of bounds to Austin P. They have yet to score this half. And a defensive foul on Jepson. I'm staying the defensive, the intensity. I'm going to keep it where it's at. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to tinker too much with the lead that we have. So it's out of bounds to Belmont, and another foul on Jepson. We're up to two team fouls in the half, half now, and they hit about, finally hit one. It's their, a three pointer. They're eight for eleven with three pointers. Marty Anderson misses a shot, draws the foul. Makes them both. And I think that was the third foul on Weber. Um, so he may have to sit down for a while. And a turnover on the other end. So we're up by 15. Missed the three-point shot there. They get the rebound. Two rebounds in a row. And he, he makes a slam dunk there, it looks like. Or an easy bucket. Um, a foul on the other end. So they're up to 14 fouls now, but... Ah, oh, we throw it away. It's a 13-point game now. Jepson is third foul. He's playing a little bit aggressive right now. Uh, we're able to get the ball back and score on the other end, up by 15. Missed the three-pointer. We're four for 10 in three-point foul, three-point shots, and another foul on us. Luckily, they are are struggling a little bit in field goal percentage this half. They're shooting 432 for the game, and they throw throw it away. I'll get rebound there up by 17, but we throw it away. <clears throat> They're really struggling the second half shooting. We're up by 19, biggest lead of the game. They finally make a basket. We missed a three-pointer. Can't convert again. We're still shooting pretty well overall, but uh, we've been a little bit colder this second half as well. Miss it again. We need to convert here, and we do. Up by 18. Edwards called for his second foul. That's our 15th foul. But nine and a half minutes left, so oh, a big three-pointer there. 21-point lead for us. Uh, that was Martin, 20th point for him. Out of bounds, but back to us on the other end. And a foul on Kevin O'Brien, their 15th foul. Oh, good play there from Anderson inside. They missed a three-pointer. They're eight for 14 now in three-pointers, so that's probably hurting them a little bit. But on the other end, Olsen gets the shot, goes to the line. So they're still down by 20, though. Um, looking good for us right now. And whew. There's an issue with the game sometimes when you hit the pause button. It changes the... <laughs> uh, it changes the... 
resolution. I've seen that a few times. It's a little bit of a glitch, not a bad one, but have to be careful. I've had it lock up the game before, so don't want to lose this game by that, by some uh, little glitch. Uh, they're back within 19. And pass deflected out of bounds, so we'll keep the ball here. And rushing misses the shot but draws the foul. He's up to 11 points uh, this game. And I'm really happy with the, the free throw shooting. 21 for 24. That has been a struggle. We've had games where we barely hit 500 in free throws. So uh, if we wind up winning this, that's going to be a key to this game. Uh, they're starting to go to the line, though, now. We're up to 18 fouls, but... Five and a half minutes left. I think we're in good shape. Uh, we keep scoring on the other end. I'm not going to slow the uh, slow the offense down just yet. Olsen throws it away. Oh, a big three-pointer there. That was uh, Cunningham off the bench. Biggest lead of the game, 23 points. Uh, they managed to score on the other end. Again, they scored. It's a 19-point game. We have really had a pretty good second half in shooting. 32 for 59, field goal percentage of 542. So we did not get cold. They did. Their field goal percentage down to 466. Kevin Floyd up to the line again. Uh, Hall, their leading score was 16. It's a 17-point game. Three minutes left. And Grower draws the foul. And he hits... The first one, we get the rebound on the miss, though, on that second one. 18-point game. Dearborn throws it away. He hasn't had a big game at all. He's the uh, leading scorer in the conference, in the OVC. Not having a great game. Uh, we missed the three-pointer. They come convert on the other end. Ben Martin throws it away. But I'd like to get to 100 points, but I'm not really caring right now. I just want the win. Ah, uh, Travel. From Anderson, so turnover. We've done pretty good in turnovers. Seven, we uh, 17 for them, just 12 for us. And Babcock, he's called for his fourth foul, uh, but we can't convert. 22 of 27 now from the free throw line, and nothing going doing. But I will take that. Um, they cut into that lead a little bit. We were up by 23 there for a while, but 95-82, uh, great win for us. Just a great win. Um, Martin, 22 points. A lot of double figures in scoring there. We'll take a look at the final stats. Dearborn, I wish this was clickable, but Dearborn, just five points in this game. Uh, we held him, really held him down pretty good. And I think maybe it was playing that zone defense throughout the whole game. But I noticed um, in the last time that we played him on the road, they won pretty easily, but it, the second half, I switched over to that 1-2-2 two, two, uh, zone defense. And for whatever reason, uh, we kept it close in the second half. And so that's why I decided to do that this game. If we play them again in the tournament, um, conference tournament, I'm going to go with the same, the same uh, strategy. Certainly on defense, because uh, if it doesn't work out, then maybe it's a fluke. But, man, what a what a win. Uh, we held them to uh, just 46.9% scoring, outscored them by seven in that second half. And, really, that was just because we slowed it down towards the end. Uh, they were still nine for 15 and three-pointers, but I think they just made one three-pointer. I think they were eight for 10 at the half. Um, ben Martin is the player of the game. Good overall game from him. Again, I'm going to miss this guy. 22 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists. Um, rushing, Jepson, Anderson in double figures. Edwards in double figures off the bench. Uh, good good play here. Even Ivory um, was plus 5 in his time off the bench. Got 5 minutes. Uh, maybe one of the... Uh, I don't know if I've seen him play more than that in a game. So he's a freshman point guard. I'm, I'm hoping he's going to be in the mix next year. I need him, but we'll see. Just great win. Shooting wound up 52.4%. Still 7 for 16 in three-pointers. I'll take that. Game to game, I, I'm happy with that kind of uh, play. They're just, Belmont's just a good shooting team. 
And then 22 of 27 for free throws. That was a great, uh, uh, that was probably the difference, really. Rebounds, <clears throat> 35 to 30. Turnovers, uh, what is that? 17 to 14. Uh, fouls, about even. Steals, 12 to 6. Uh, a few blocks. They uh, had more blocks than we did, but just a great, great game. So let's see how the uh, rest of the conference looked in their games. <clears throat> and let's go back to March 3rd. So Moorhead State lost to Jacksonville. Uh, Tennessee State lost to Southeast Missouri State. So I'm, I'm thinking that pretty much clinches third spot third in the conference for Southeast Missouri State. Um, standings, you take a look at that. Man, it, it hurts that we lost some of those games that we did. I mean, some missed opportunities there because two losses in the conference, and, and we could be looking at the conference uh, t title, you know, at least regular season title had we uh, not lost those two games that really we, we should have won. But Southeast Missouri State, they actually tied Tennessee State in third. Then Tennessee Tech, uh, Moorhead State, Eastern Illinois, Eastern Kentucky, Tennessee Martin, the Murray State, they struggled. Um, and I think it was Moorhead State that we lost on the road. Yeah, they, they were competitive. Uh, Tennessee State, I mean, those are two tough teams to play on the road in this conference. Uh, Tennessee Tech, maybe that's a game we should have played a little bit better. Have we done that again? You know, we at least be tied with Belmont, uh, but I'm I'm going to be happy with that. 22 and seven, 14 and four in the conference. Uh, even our RPI rank is pretty good. Um, in terms of the the stats on the team, just looking at points primarily. Martin leads the way with 14.3. Jepson, I was really pretty pleased with the way he played uh, down the stretch. I mean, this is a current rated three-star uh, small forward, three and a half potential. He's just a sophomore. He should be really one of our better players next year. Wound up with a good overall uh, line there from him. Uh, but down the stretch, like I say, he looked good. Two games in a row with 19 points, uh, double digits in that last win against Belmont. So at least I got somebody I can probably look to next year to, to help us out. Coming off the bench, uh, Greg Edwards, uh, another guy, um, power forward. Not too bad from him either. Three and a half star potential down the stretch. He had a few games, 15 points against Eastern Illinois, 11 against Belmont. So he, he could also be in the mix. Ratings progression, it's not probably going to change until next year, but uh, who else is... Uh, Probably pretty positive. Another small forward, sophomore Marshak. He got quite a bit of uh, playing time, too. Uh, 20 minutes against Eastern Kentucky. Didn't do much with it, but he's had a few games here and there. He did get a lot of minutes, so he should be competing for the starting job next year, at least getting some play time. Uh, Greg Laws, power forward. The other power forward, um, Jepson, not Jepson, sorry, rushing a senior rebound totals were really good but i was not happy with this guy uh, I, i'm hoping that laws um and maybe tucker i don't know I, i'm starting to to wonder if i've made a mistake in drafting or not drafting in um recruiting that i didn't go for a power forward i may have to i may have to try to snatch one uh up before, before too late in recruiting anyway. Um, and just, well, I'll look at a few other things here, and then we'll go to recruiting. So points, totals, uh, let's look at, let's say free throw percentage. I think, yeah, Martin 940 may have led the conference in that. He was really awesome from the free throw line. Total rebounds, that Easily went to Anderson. Senior, I'm going to lose next year. And then rushing with five. Um, assist, Grower finishes up with 4.4. Not too bad. Steals, uh, Marty Anderson's a senior. He's a, a center. Uh, 
don't see anybody there too good in that category. Uh, so it, you know, I knew going in. If you if you've watched this throughout the playthrough, I knew going in. This is a senior heavy team. This was our year, and you know that's a good year to have twenty two and seven. But it's going to be a real big challenge next year to. I wouldn't even say repeat. I mean, it's going to be hard to to match that. I think with the holes we're going to have in, in the lineup. Uh, but another thing I wanted to do is I wanted to hit up on the recruiting just a little bit because there's a couple positives in that. So we got a verbal from Speedy McMillan, who is a two-star point guard, but he looked really good. The, these uh, in parentheses, uh, I think this is his rankings overall, but this is how well he looked, I think, after going through some of the uh, clinics or whatever you call them. I forget what you call them in the game. Um doesn't really tell me here, but I think there's some upside to this guy. And if he doesn't, if he doesn't, uh, especially with his passing ball handling, if he doesn't step into the starting role as a freshman, he's going to compete. I think he's going to get some playing time off the bench. So I've got a three-star uh, shooting guard, two-star point guard committed. They're both freshmen. I've got Mike Mallett, a center, uh, who's ranked, you know, not too bad. I mean, the, you know, I guess he looked pretty bad in contrast in some of the um, uh, clinics. Or Again, I'm sorry, I, I'm not remembering what the term is. But he's still overall for our school and prestige level. I'm pretty happy with this. And I, he's still favoring us as his top school. I'm hoping we're going to get him. And we've got another shooting guard just to kind of round out the, the roster. And then, you know, I may, like I say, I may be looking at Jake Harriman as power forward and trying to get him clo higher up the list. I may have to work on uh, contacting him. Maybe I think I scheduled him for a a visit. Let me make, let me make sure. I'll go to recruiting just to see if I did schedule him for a visit. Yeah, he is scheduled to come to the camp to campus. Hopefully, we'll be able to wow him and and get him to uh, commit to us. That would be a pretty good. I think that would be a pretty good class for where we were uh, in prestige and this being my first year as coach and all that kind of thing. So, last thing I'll do, I had a, a comment. I noticed someone wanting to see how the rest of of the NCAA was looking. So I'm going to finish this day's games and then we'll take a look at how the polls are looking in some of the other conferences. Looks like I got a couple emails coming through. We may even uh, see what the uh, conference tournament's going to look like as well before we end the episode. So here we go. Mike Mallett, and he is committed. So another uh, another good thing there. Uh, so recruiting class now. We got three two three guys that I'm pretty happy that we were able to to get. Uh, hopefully that won't change. But I've also let me see what else we got going on here. Harriman, he had an awesome visit. Oh man, that's great. So let me let me take a look at how that's gonna change recruiting. So he was warm going in. We're now his top pick. So I'm not even gonna waste any time. I've got one scholarship to give. I'm gonna offer it to him right now. So that would be uh, that would be a pretty good turnaround on the recruiting to go from we were really struggling to have. Four guys rated two or better as freshmen. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't feel too bad about that going into next season. So do we have any bad news here? Players declaring for the grab? And none. None of our underclassmen are going to declare. Uh, Norton finalists, nobody from the OVC. Uh, so let's look at the polls in the media to see how it finished up in the regular season anyway. So Florida 
who has been on, on a good roll. Uh, I think they were first the last time I ch- checked. It's been primarily these teams right here in the mix almost all season. Coaches poll, Louisville is, has overtaken Florida. But you've got Florida, Louisville, Iowa, Gonzaga, Connecticut having a good season, Kentucky, uh, North Carolina, unlike in real life, uh, they've had a solid year, 26-5. and five. Kansas, another solid year for them in, in this playthrough. Uh, Tennessee Volunteers, their 20th. Uh, Arkansas in the SEC looks pretty good. New Mexico State rounding it out. Pretty, yeah, pretty much the same for the coaches' poll. Uh, Bubble Watch, um, I saw Vanderbilt in there. I, I'm, I'm in SEC country, so uh, I guess I'm primarily looking at teams from our region. I'm, I'm surprised to see them there. But on the Bubble Watch, um, we were 18th the last I looked, so we're at 15th. We would have to win the conference tournament, I'm pretty sure, to, to make it. Uh, let me see if that's showing up. Yeah, so... Don't know who we're going to play yet, but let's go back to um, let's look at some standings here for for the, some of these different major conferences. So we'll start out American Athletic, Connecticut, Temple, uh, Wichita State had a pretty decent year. Those are those three teams are probably in a good position to make the tournament. Memphis, who I played early, they struggled. Uh, they were a, a ranked team going into the season. And then just fell apart, apparently. They beat us easily, but uh, wound up just finishing 15 and 16. Uh, Atlantic 10, Rhode Island had a good year. Davidson, who I think were getting some, um, were ranked here and there throughout the year. They uh, finished second in the conference. America East, not too familiar with them. So at ACC, you have Louisville, North Carolina, Pittsburgh. Uh, North Carolina State having a good year. Those teams will probably make it. Boston College may be on the bubble there, but Duke, 10 and 10 in conference, 16 and 14 overall. Syracuse, uh, a pretty poor year there as well. Virginia, 7 and 13. Florida State, 5 and 15 in conference, 10 and 21. That's, that's a surprise. I'm not sure though how close to the real uh, NCAA some of these rankings were, so that may not mean too much. Big 12, you got Oklahoma State and Kansas tying. Uh, but Oklahoma State, 26 and 6. I'm not sure why they weren't ranked a little bit higher. I guess RPI is a little bit better for Kansas. Uh, but after them, Oklahoma, they may have a chance. Kansas State may have a chance at the tournament. Uh, Big 10. Oh, Big East. Let me, let me take a look at them, too. So we got Villanova, 15 and 3, 25 and 5 overall. Good year from them. Butler and Seton Hall. They're probably got a good chance for the tournament. Providence, 20 wins for them. Now looking at the Big Ten, Iowa, Wisconsin, good year. Michigan, Michigan State, Maryland. Five teams in that six teams in that top 25. This probably was the toughest conference in this playthrough. Illinois. 13 and 7 in conference, they're probably right on the bubble. Uh, a lot of teams probably going to make the uh, tournament for, from this conference. Uh, let's see, Big West. Is that where Gonzaga is? Probably not. Is it the Mountain West? San Diego State, 17 and 1, 27 and 3 overall. Good year for them. Utah State, 21 and 8. Uh, UNLV, are they in this one? Yeah, not too good. 9-20 and 20 overall. And then Southeastern Conference, Arkansas, Florida. Arkansas finished with a better record in conference, but Florida, for some reason, uh, I, I'm not really sure why this is the way it is. I would expect Arkansas to be ranked a little bit higher. Kind of crazy there. Uh, I mean, the RPI is the same. I mean, I mean Florida... Ranked number one, the only ranked non-conference team they played was Memphis. All right, so so Arkansas, and con- by contrast, they beat Michigan State. They beat Villanova. 
They beat guitar. I'm I'm not getting that one. That's a weird one. If I was, you know, if I was ranking, I would probably say Arkansas had a better season there, but uh, maybe not. That's really strange. Uh, Tennessee, the last team ranked. Alabama had a good had a good year, twenty two wins. So West Coast, Gonzaga, easily twenty eight and two overall, fifteen and one. St. Mary's, who we played early in the year, they were competitive, eight and eight in conference, fifteen and fourteen overall. Pretty, pretty competitive conference in some ways, but you're probably only going to see Gonzaga in the tournament from that. Uh, did I miss anybody? I don't think so. Uh, in terms of the big conferences, so we'll go to. <clears throat> I'm going to see if I can play here to we get to the point of who we're going to meet in that tournament. And let me see, I'm gonna to have to go back to uh, Austin P. And OVC here. All right, so it's going to be Moorhead State, Southeast Missouri State, SIU Edwardsville, and Tennessee State. We're going to be up against Moorhead State. I, I th Even though they beat us, it was on the road. So I, I'm okay with that uh, because I think Belmont's got a tougher time there. Um, and in terms of the scouting report, Moorhead State, we're favored, but that doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, they, could be, they could be coming into this one pretty high. So that's where we're going to leave it. Um, I'll... Next episode, I'll hopefully uh, play through the whole tournament, however it lasts, long it lasts, if we lose the first game. Um, but, man, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. If we can get by, if we can get to Belmont and have the same game that we just had against them, we might have a chance here, and that would be phenomenal to do that in my first season here with this game and, and, and that team. Um but I'll leave it here for now. And, uh, again, I appreciate all the comments and likes and uh, the support on this playthrough. Uh, I, I've, it's gotten a little bit more interest than I thought. But if, if you're kind of like me, a sports fan, you're really missing that uh, basketball tournament right now. And uh, hopefully things will straighten out and we'll, we'll get some of that back a little bit later. But for now, I appreciate you guys watching uh, my uh, playthrough here. And and I'm getting ready to do Out of the Park Baseball soon. I've got a couple videos up for the uh, out, of, out of the Park 21 that just came out. I'm going to be doing a playthrough with the Cubs. So if you have any interest in that, please give it a look. Uh, it'll be on the same channel, Strict 9 gp but different, uh, different, um, I was, <laughs> I'm, having, I'm having trouble with my words today. It, it'll be a different playlist, uh, but check a Take a look for it on my channel if you're interested. But I will see you next episode on this one, and we'll see if we got a Cinderella team here uh, when we get to the tournament. Thanks a lot.